getting ready to install this sniper EFI system on my 87 uh, SSL Camino. Uh, currently have a Street Demon carburetor on there, which I really like. Um, primary reason I'm doing this is in the summertime, uh, I'm in the Houston area, um, the uh, fuel would start boiling um, before it even got to the carburetor, so it caused all kinds of issues uh, with hard starts and, uh, you know, uh, I guess the fuel vapor, the boiling fuel would go into the carburetor and get past the uh, fuel pressure regulator and um, it would kind of uh, choke out the carburetor. So, um, instead of going to the trouble of just adding a return line, I think which would have probably helped the situation, um, you know, changing over to a fuel pressure regulator that had a return um, and run a, a line since this one does not have it uh, originally from the factory. Uh, I thought, well, if I'm going to drop the tank and add a return line, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, upgrade to the EFI and uh, be done with it. So, um, in the process of actually draining the fuel tank, which I've got the supply line disconnected down there by the fuel pump, and I've got the rear of the vehicle jacked up about oh a half a foot or so uh, higher than the, the front of it and it just uh, siphoned uh, I've got about 12 gallons out so far so I think I'm pretty close to empty um, so once that's done we can drop the tank tomorrow and uh, take care of that and speaking of tanks uh, I got this from original parts group it is a EFI tank um, for the 8687 El Caminos with the 4.3 V6, I believe. So, and I checked the uh, codes on the glove box door, and this is a uh, supposedly a 17 gallon tank, uh, as this one is as well. So, it should be a direct bolt in. Don't expect any issues with that. Um, but with the EFI, I got the basic system here, so I don't have the additional uh, fuel line and uh, filters and uh, external fuel pump. So I went with the sending unit, again for 8687 El Camino with the 4.3 V6 EFI engine. And got this from Mike's Monty's and added a couple of Dash 6 fittings. Uh, to the top of the sending unit here and uh, for the vent which is on the right hand side I'll uh, just go ahead and do that old school and put a hose clamp on that um, but this is the uh, Walbro 255 uh, liter per hour uh, fuel pump so that should be able to uh, keep up with the, uh, the Holly and then it comes with a couple harnesses one for the uh, oxygen sensor and then the uh, touch screen and then you got the uh, fuel pump relay wire harness and I guess this is for auxiliary uh, controls such as uh, electric fans like I've got um, I'm currently running the uh, Dakota digital uh, fan controller on here so I'm gonna see if I can eliminate that and just use the uh, Holly controller and uh, maybe uh, free up some uh, wires underneath the hood and under the dash. But um, yes, had uh, quite a uh, bit of uh, time invested into sourcing all the dash six fittings and I've got some uh, 3 8 uh, aluminum uh, tubing hard line that I'm gonna use for the return going back to the new tank and uh, I'm sure that there'll be other things that pop up uh, during the installation, but I'm hoping to knock this out in the next couple days. All right, we're about to pull the uh, Demon carburetor off of this thing. If we can get this air cleaner off. And then uh, disconnect the linkage. 
all the fittings, the vacuum lines, all that good stuff, and see how this uh, sniper EFI bolts on here. Like some of the forms were saying, this uh, plenum separation there uh, causes issues with the EFI. So they said a lot of guys will machine that out. Yeah. And that's the like other. That's what they do with the air gap. Anyway. That's why they put the spacers on there to get that to to read. So what I want to do is look at the bottom of the Demon carburetor versus the Sniper and see if there's actual difference to you know the size of the the bores. And those are, that's just a true square bore. This is smaller in the front, smaller primaries, and it's got that big goggle valve in the back. Yeah. So. See, because that, that's why that gasket is like that. You keep that with that carburetor. So, yeah, we can't use that, can we? But we're going to need another. And this goes with that carburetor for the paper. So, like, the way it's set up right now, it should be pretty close to right. Because you've got no intrusion anywhere around the spacer. Oh, sure. Okay, doing a comparison of the uh, Street Demon carburetor with the throttle body of this uh, Sniper EFI. The linkage appears to be very similar between the two. Uh, the only difference that uh, I notice is that there's only two holes here for a stud like that to go through and uh, which fortunately this is set up for the TV cable on a 700R4 or 200R4R uh, which is what I'm running and then the uh, stud for the accelerator cable will go right there so that should work out perfect for my application but I'm not for sure what that third hole would have been for maybe it's a, a Ford application but um, the uh, bolt pattern obviously is the same both these are made by uh, Holly um, I did notice however that uh, there's no provision on the back of the uh, throttle body on the sniper for uh, a brake booster hard line to thread into. It's got a, a big uh, port back here that's uh, supposedly for uh, vacuum for the, the brakes. Um, the Street Demon had a threaded uh, port back there that you could put your own uh, fitting in to uh, match your hard line going to it. So I'll probably have to run a, a rubber line to do that. But um, other than that, I don't see any other issues. I see a threaded plug here in the front of the sniper throttle body, and I'm not sure if that is uh, ported vacuum or manifold vacuum, but uh, uh, maybe that's a source for... Uh, vacuum as well for uh, brake boosters but uh, yeah it should be pretty straightforward bolting on the 
intake. In fact, got a uh, Edelbrock uh, EPS uh, performer uh, intake, and we've got a uh, half inch spacer that is some kind of laminate or, or wood veneer. And uh, we painted it because it looked like the natural veneer color like it is on the inside there. So I thought that looked kind of off. But anyways, um, I uh, ran across a couple of threads and some forums about um, this uh, plenum right here being an issue with the sniper. Um, and they said the quick fix is uh, to put a spacer on there. Uh, otherwise, you have to take the uh, intake off and then machine this down so the uh, sniper can read both sides of the, uh, I guess, pulses of the engine. Um, not sure if that's true. I hadn't really found a whole lot of <clears throat> document documentation in the uh, manual about that specifically, but uh, just feedback from folks on the Internet uh, had mentioned that, so I figured, well, that's uh, cheap insurance. So... About to install that throttle body and start hooking up uh, some cables and see how all that's going to work. Um, and then start running some wires inside the uh, passenger compartment and and uh, figure out where I'm going to put my, uh, my touch screen. Okay, so this is the uh, plug for the temperature sensor, which I'm debating whether or not I'm going to switch it out. Um, I've got a Dakota Digital uh, fan controller on this, and it uses the same exact plug. So I unplugged the Dakota Digital, and uh, Holly's harness plugs right in there. So. I'm going to have to research that and see if i got to switch that sensor out. But um, that's what that one is. Um, this one is for the um, main power um, harness. 
which I believe this is it right here. So it's got the fuel pump relay on it. So I gotta figure out where I'm gonna run all that stuff. Yeah. So I'll probably run it over on that side of the uh, engine bay. And it looks like a 30 amp fuse. But here's the uh, main power supply, which gets connected straight to the uh, positive uh, on the battery itself, along with the uh, negative. And then this is the uh, fuel pump uh, positive that will go back to the uh, sending unit. So run all that stuff over there. And this is a connector, I believe, for... Um, if you're running a uh, aftermarket coil system, so I don't think we need that. Um, this one, I believe, is a six pin connector. That is for the oxygen sensor. So I believe that goes like that. So that will have to go on the opposite side, because I'm going to run the oxygen sensor over there. And I believe that accounts for all the wiring harness. Got to run, a, run this cable inside the, the touch screen controller. So... That gets plugged into this guy back here. So I've got to find either an existing hole to go through or pop another hole in there and put a rubber grommet on it. So I've got to figure out where I'm going to mount that but uh, and get the uh, mounting studs for the accelerator cable and uh, the uh, TV cable. And I did find out uh, before we pulled off the carburetor that when we had the gas pedal pushed as far as we could uh, to the floor, the TV cable was at full uh, travel. And so we were missing about another probably 20% of uh, cable travel on the accelerator cable. So I found this uh, kit on eBay. It's a Sonax part, uh, AS1-01K, and what it is, is it's a little uh, spring that will go on the TV cable itself with a little fitting that slips over the cable itself that the spring locks into, so um, it has tension um, at idle on the TV cable, so you're actually getting, I guess, pressure through the uh, transmission um, properly. And then when it's fully extended, you've got a spring to kind of make up the difference between the full travel of the TV cable and the accelerator cable. So I'm going to put that on before I forget. So the kit comes with five of these things, and that's the only way you could order it. But uh, it's got the little spring retainer that. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, where it's got a slot in it that goes inside that after it's been put on the uh, cable itself. So I'm going to do that now. And then slip that guy over. Got to find the slot. There it is. that kind of snaps into place. And then when you hook the uh, TV cable up, you can see right now it's at the bottom of its travel. But if I position it to where it has uh, just a little bit of uh, 
travel in it to meet where the stud's going to be, um, it'll keep it in a safe zone for uh, the proper pressure to go through the transmission and it won't burn up clutches or whatever else it does. So then, but at full throttle, you can see, I don't know if you can see that, you pull it to full throttle and it's got that much give which will allow the accelerator cable uh, its full travel. So you'll actually get um, wide open throttle, whereas before on the, the Street Demon carburetor I was getting about 80% uh, wide open throttle. So anyways, these uh, uh, springs and, and uh, this kit here um, I believe cost 30 bucks, but uh, I figured that was the easiest way to fix the geometry of these uh, th these cables. Even though these throttle bodies and, and carburetors like the Street Demon have a provision for the quote proper geometry for your TV cable, it really doesn't work um, exactly the way it should from what I can tell. And I know that other people on uh, some of the forums and stuff that I've been on have mentioned the same thing. So. One guy swore up and down that this was his uh, ultimate fix, so we're going to test that out. But uh, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going I'm to steal some uh, parts off of the Street Demon, get all this stuff cinched up, and uh, start working on wiring, and then possibly uh, get the fuel tank installed and, and do that wiring back there. Putting on the uh, hardware to secure this thing down I normally don't snug down too much. All right, the torque specs on the throttle body uh, base is uh, 60 to 80 inch pounds, and uh, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. TV cable stud, which goes in the upper one here for the 204R. I guess if you're doing the uh, Turbo 350 transmission, it goes on the one furthest forward and down. Should be right there. So obviously I got to adjust my TV cable because now I've got that spring and that uh, 
retainer in there to hold the spring in. And what I'll end up probably doing is putting these at a slight angle upward so it's kind of more of a natural uh, alignment. And here's the stud for the accelerator cable. Found interesting that uh, the Holly sniper kit does not come with any kind of studs for any of this stuff. So, anyways, that'll go like that after I snug that up, and then I'll redo these to uh, get the proper alignment and the proper distance. Uh, it looks like my accelerator cable goes out another quarter inch so I can adjust that bracket back a little bit to take up some of that and that'll help get me the uh, wide open throttle uh, that I had an issue with on the uh, Street Demon and then this this is a little more in depth this is uh, there's a proper procedure that um, you're supposed to do to get it to set uh, correctly if it was a, a factory uh, uh, type set up on the transmission, but this is a hopped up transmission stage one and it shifts a little bit differently. So talking to my transmission guy, he told me, you know, where the shift point should be approximately and uh, dialed it in and got that right. So I have to redo that process um, once I get this thing running again. So let me snug those up. a little bit bigger. done is I put a weight on the accelerator pedal and so it's uh, fully retracted. I'm going to adjust this to match where it's wide open throttle on the throttle body so that way I'm insured to get uh, wide open throttle when I hit that gas pedal. All right, I'll take that weight off and see how it reacts. Feels like it should. Put the clip back on it. And I'm going to put the weight back on and see if I'm at full throttle. Yep, I think we're good. And then this guy is next. I'm going to try to ballpark that one. And there's a detent right here you can push in and actually pull it out. on like that. So supposedly when you're at wide open throttle, you can see how that spring collapses. So, and that's supposed to give enough tension on that to where the uh, pressures in the transmission itself are uh, within spec. So, 
that's kind of a ballpark. Um, like I said, uh, you got to road test it to make sure it is functioning properly and shifting at the points it's supposed to, but this gets you kind of in the ballpark. So if I take that back off, you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got a little bit of tension on it and it's not quite in line with that pin. So when I pull it and snap it into place, it's got some pressure on here, which allows the transmission to circulate the correct pressure inside it uh, to keep the clutches from burning up. So I think we got it in the ballpark. So we're going to call that good. Got that snap back in. Good there. I'm going to do one more test on the uh, accelerator pedal. Feels pretty close. That is definitely full throttle. That's full throttle, and we still have a little bit of give there on the TV cable, so that is definitely where it's supposed to be. Last night I uh, pulled the Dakota Digital uh, controller, fan controller. Um, out and started pulling the wiring uh, back through the firewall and trying to determine what wires that I would still need um, to uh, connect to the uh, sniper system because um, it controls uh, the fans. Um, so I've got dual fans on here. And uh, so I'm going to utilize these uh, two white wires that uh, went to the uh, Dakota Digital Controller. And then uh, there was this 12-volt uh, constant uh, on wire that I've got to uh, work in. I think I'll connect it straight to the battery. Um, the only issue I'm having right now is trying to figure out how to make the Sniper uh, EFI system trigger the fans uh, when the AC is on. So I've got a uh, email out to Holly's Tech uh, support uh, folks and hoping to get an answer back on that. I haven't found anything on YouTube uh, that touches on that, so um, I'm hoping that uh, I'll get some answers from them and be able to wire this thing the way it's supposed to be done. All right, just took this section of exhaust out to uh, weld up the uh, O2 bun. And uh, I'm not using the one that came with the uh, Sniper EFI kit. I uh, went down to the local auto parts store and got this uh, basically a large nut that is the same thread as the uh, O2 sensor threads. And uh, just double checking before I weld it all the way in that it is at least at a 10 degree, uh, I guess, incline or angle. Uh, so it looks like I've got that, plus I've got enough space up here so I shouldn't have to worry about uh, 
clearance um, on the floor pan. All right, about to burn in this uh, bung for the O2 sensor. I think I got a good weld all the way around, so I think we're good.